On this episode of Josh's Car Corner, I'm gonna find out if the Maverick Man carbon fiber diffuser is worth the wait, but more importantly, worth the money. So in this episode, I'm going to be doing something that I've wanted to do for quite a while now, and that is to install the Maverick Man carbon fiber diffuser. Maverick Man is a guy who makes parts for a lot of different performance cars, one of those cars being the Pontiac GTO. He sells and resells a lot of other vendors' parts as well, but the thing he's known for is all the carbon fiber pieces he makes for the GTO. He makes spoilers, he's made hoods in the past, he makes factory style SAP grills, he makes all kinds of interior bits you can do. The thing he is best known for probably though is this carbon fiber diffuser and he also makes these in fiberglass today too. Now straight away the one thing I will say is that one of the big gripes that a lot of people have with Maverick Man is the time it takes to get something you order from him. I ordered this diffuser from him after I returned from Holden Run last year, so that would have been late October. And it was only two weeks ago that I got notification that the diffuser was complete and was going to be sent to me. So that is a period of about eight months, eight and a half months it took to get this. Now that was my experience, but that's not the same experience everybody has. See, what happens is when you order something from him, you actually get put on a wait list because he makes things at certain times, once he has enough requests for something, he'll do a production run. So some people get lucky and they get in right at the end, right when he's about to start making something and they only wait maybe three months. Some people on the other hand get in right in at the beginning and they wait over a year. So this took me about eight and a half months to receive and I will say for context that at the same time I also ordered a set of his factory replica SAP grills and I have had no word on whether those are gonna be done anytime in the future. So you pay $30 to get on the wait list and then once your part is complete you have 48 hours to pay the additional remaining charge to get the part sent to you. So once it was done I had to pay an extra $530 for the part plus shipping. And I did get the part within a week. Based on where you live, the shipping will cost a different amount, but all in, this diffuser can end up costing you up to $600. And I'm just under the, under the uh, line for $600 on this. So if you're going to pay that much for a non-standard part for your car, as far as I'm concerned, it has to meet three requirements. The first one, does it fit? For that kind of money, this part should fit in the rear bumper insert with no unusual gaps. It should fit perfectly, nice and tight along the edge of the bumper. No seams, no weird appearance things. It should fit and look like it belongs there. Two, I should be able to install this thing without making any permanent modifications to the car whatsoever. This should be a drop-in piece. And third, and for me this is uh, just opinion, but I think it has to look good. It has to be aesthetically correct. It has to follow the lines of the car, it has to make sense to look like it belongs there. And if it doesn't, and it just looks kind of generic, then I'm not sure that it fulfills that third requirement of mine. So, truth be told, I have not opened this. This is the way I received it just a few days ago. So we're gonna open it up, look at how it's packaged inside, look at the setup, and I will take you through the install process of putting one of these on your car. Okay, so right off the bat, I don't know if you'll be able to see all of this, but this is what it looks like on the inside. That's how it's packed. It looks okay, but it can move around in there a little bit. So that's a bit concerning. I think, especially with tabs on the bottom, I think I might have preferred that to be a little more tightly packed, but we'll see what it looks like. So we got Standard uh, shameless advertising. We got Map Man stickers here. We got a whole different one with a GTO on it. Looks like some sort of pamphlet inside. All right, so on the back side here, you can definitely see evidence of the production process, but ooh, that does look good. Although it does have, I will say mine has got some imperfections, or no, no, I'm sorry, that's not imperfections, that's just some residue that's laying on the top. That's pretty good. So, looks like right here we've got three tabs right here where it's gonna slide up into the bumper. And I was reading the instructions and 
you have to do rib certs. Although I will say that the instructions he sends are a little bit um, questionable. I'll actually show them to you right here. These came in the email to me letting me know that the part was going to be shipped. And when you look at them, it kind of looks like the thing that a teenager would sit there and text in class with run on sentences and no paragraph breaks, no pictures either, which is a little, um, I don't know. I just, I think for this kind of money, I think it would be nice if you got a nice set of instructions either in a doc board document or at least broken out into paragraphs with proper punctuation and spacing. But that's neither here nor there. I went through them. It roughly tells you what you need to do to put this in. Uh, the first thing I need to do is get the original piece off the car and I'll show you how to do that right now. So in order to do this, you have to take the belly pan off the car too. Now mine is installed in a special way right now because I don't have the trailer brace in there and it has these um, deep nuts that have a shaft on them that actually goes up here and screws in. So what I have is I just have these nylock nuts that are barely on there with a washer holding it up. So it actually pushes it up a little bit, but so far that's the best way I found to hold it. But I've got to take this off and then we can get to all of the little, uh, they call them riv certs that you have to take out, which it's a short way of saying uh, rivets with a screw. Okay, I got this belly pan out. Now, if you have the trailer brace in here still, you'll have the four bolts here holding the belly pan on. But up here, I just wanted to point out, you also have to take the uh, connect these connections right here for the rear wheel speed sensors off the belly pan. And then there's two more bolts up here that hold it on. Everything should be 17 millimeter. So now that we're in here, we have to pull these things out now. There should be six of them all the way around if the internet is to be believed. There's one up here that looks like it's a nut and a, and a bolt, which is not the worst thing, but I'm probably going to change that because according to Mathman's instructions, you want to replace these with nuts and bolts too. I guess he wants it to be as rigidly mounted as it can be, and these don't exactly hold it rigidly. You, I can move this around, so I think he wants it to be a nice solid mount. And I don't know if you can see the one right there too, but yeah, that's a nut bolt setup I'm gonna to have to replace as well. So I'll get this out, then I'm gonna to go to the hardware store and find the right size nuts and bolts. I'm gonna use nylock nuts, because I don't wanna bolt this thing down super tight because carbon fiber is strong, but it's also brittle. I don't wanna crush it, break it. I just wanna get nylocks on there so I can get them tight enough and they won't back off when I'm done with my installation. Uh, looks like there's two more right here. That would make the six. So they also slide in here, so I'm gonna need six little nuts and bolts to hold this thing on. Okay, so I have to make a correction here because these right here are for the bumper. They are not for the lower insert. So these you don't have to take out. The other ones that I was missing were to the inside. So there's one right here, and then there's another one right here. And I'm to the point where I'm taking the insert off. So on the top, there's tabs on the outside edges here. So you just start to slowly rotate it out. And I can see here, the last time my car got resprayed, they didn't take this thing out. Cheap. So you just rotate this out like that, and you can see those pop out. I got that one out, and if I just keep rotating and pulling, the middle one came out, and the insert is out. So I'll test fit the carbon fiber one in here, see what that looks like. And um, because a previous body shop has already replaced my screws nuts with uh, this proper nut and bolt combination. I might just reuse these if I can, and I'll throw the carbon fiber one in here, see what it looks like. Okay, I've got the factory valence and the new diffuser here, so I'll just take a second and look at the differences here. So if you look at the factory one, you can see that the fingers on it are pretty short. They don't protrude up very far. Now the ones on the carbon fiber diffuser definitely protrude up farther. That, that should help to seat it that could also pose difficulties in getting it in there. So we'll find out about that. And in terms of fit and finish, it looks like the curves and the angles are pretty much the same. Looks like they he followed the factory line right here that you have right here. Followed it pretty much the same. So we'll see how this thing fits. Okay, got the carbon fiber one right here. I'm trying my best not to touch it. I don't wanna smear it too much. So let's see how hard this is gonna go in. So first off, it's not going in the middle hole. Um, it's too wide. 
so it's not going to fit in there and he said don't force it so i'm not going to but what that means is i'm going to have to modify this or i'm going to have to open up this hole on the car and one of the rules i said is if i have to permanently modify the car this is not a good piece so Unfortunately, to make this fit, I am gonna to have to grind this middle tab down a little bit before I can even find out if the outside tabs are gonna fit in. So I'm gonna to have to get out my Dremel or a piece of sanding paper or something and thin this tab out a little bit uh, before I give this another try. Okay, I've sanded that middle finger down a little bit on both sides and it now will fit in here, but I've discovered a new problem. Because the fingers on his diffuser are longer, it won't simply drop and slide out the way it is. He mentions in his instructions that you have to undo the exhaust hangers and because those fingers are so much longer, I'm gonna to have to undo both these rubber exhaust hangers and I'm hoping the tips will hang down enough that I can get the thing in there because you gotta pretty much put it in there flush. And then once the middle finger is engaged, then you gotta rotate it a little bit and now I can find out if the outer ones are even gonna fit or if I'm gonna to have to massage those a little bit as well. All right, so that one's in. crack some of the clear coat off the bottom of my bumper right by the chip. Now, for some reason, this, this corner won't go in, it, like it won't rotate. It's like if I, I feel like I'm pushing against it, like I'm stressing it, it won't, it won't come over. So uh, I guess I have to take this back out. Something's not right. The problem I think is that I took enough off of here to get it to fit in there, but I have to take off a lot more because this thing has to be able to move around in there in order to let this rotate enough for both these sides to get in. So I've got to take a lot more off this middle one. Um, I'm a little concerned about that because it's not the fattest piece in the world, but if I'm going to make this work, this is what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so I've had to work on this for about a half hour now. All of the problems of getting this thing in are coming from this middle tab right here. I narrowed it up enough to get it in there, but then the problem is right at the very bottom where it's gotta get all the way up there so it can get flush, I just couldn't get that wide enough with sandpaper, so I had to break out my roto zip in a very fine bit and just be very, very careful and work my way all the way to the bottom and get this thing thin. I'm also having to shave some off of the, uh, front edge of it here because once it rotates down it gets starts to get really tight and I can hear it like really stretching the bumper out trying to get these two tabs in so I've taken some off the top two to hopefully help with that but there is a point of diminishing returns with this because you'll reach a point I'm sure where you take so much material off of this that it's no longer uh, strong enough to support uh, the piece and do its job and it's gonna snap right off. So I'm reluctant to take off much more than this. So I hope this is enough to make it fit in there, but it's tight. I can get one corner in and then the other corner wants to fight me. Even if I push it up in there, it wants to force its way back out, which means that corner's all crooked. These parts down here don't line up. So I'm gonna put this thing in one more time and hopefully it'll fit in there now. Okay, well, I have been monkeying around with this thing now for over an hour and I've got it to the point now where that middle section goes in pretty tight um but there are some problems well first off as soon as you rotate it out it does that but what happens is this and i'll show you so it is possible to get this section up nice and tight so there's no gap there it looks good and even with the even with the middle you can see pretty tight then you would tuck that part in down there with the screw and it, and it fits good as soon as you put the other side in over here like this and then you try to push it up so it's all flush and you don't see those holes, it's hitting right in between that tab and this tab. It's hitting right in this section right here, tied against the body. It's as if the line here comes up against the body and then goes back down. And it does the same thing over here. It comes up and goes back down and because it's hitting the bumper you can't tuck it all the way up 
So you see that. I can hold it up like this, but I can't tighten anything under the car enough to make it stay up there. So it just, it won't sit tight because it's hitting here in the middle. And I'm not prepared to take a Dremel to a top edge, a decorative edge, and start grinding that down to make it fit in there tight. So I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know what I'm going to do at this point, if I'm just going to install it where you can see the gaps or or what I'm going to do. So I'm going to work on it for a little more and, and think about it. Okay, I have been monkeying with this for almost two hours now, and I finally got it installed. But I'm afraid to say I had to make a permanent modification. So if you can see up in here, this is uh, this is the bottom part of the bumper right here. That gray section is actually the inner skin of the bumper, and it's what part of what the lower valence attaches to. I had to use these zip ties here to pull it up and towards the car because if I didn't, this corner was sitting all crooked and it was sitting way off. It was sitting more like right here. And as it is, it's getting pulled to this point by the screw and the nut that are holding it here. If I undo that, it wants to sit in about three quarters of an inch. There's nothing I can do to make it sit right. So it's getting all pulled and torqued right now. And I believe that's also torquing the bumper itself because as I remember correctly, this gap right here wasn't as big as it was before. So I believe that the insert, the diffuser is actually pulling it to increase that gap, the whole bumper. Uh, and I'm having other issues too. This side fits okay. This roll, this part right here rolls over pretty nicely and there's not a, this is tucked in a little bit and it, this side fell right into place right down here. Um, but there's a decent sized gap there. I can't get that any tighter than it is. This slides in and out pretty well now. And this too, this is a little bit closer, but because this corner's all torqued, this is almost flush right here. It's not really recessed in as much. And it actually sticks out a little bit right here. And then it's, it's flush down here because it's getting pulled into place by the screw. But there's a bow in it right here. And it's actually a little outside the bumper. Whereas on this side, it's tucked in or it's flush a little bit. Uh, right there, it's in, inset a little bit. And here it's going flush. So this is as good as I can get this diffuser to sit in here. Okay, so it's been about a week since I installed the carbon fiber diffuser on my car. And I wanted to take a week to uh, give it some time to change its shape and uh, stretch a little bit. Mathman says you need to give it a few days. Its form will change to conform to the car a little better. So I wanted to see if that was true. So things I like about the carbon fiber diffuser. One, I think it does flow with the rear bumper nicely. I especially like how it sticks out beyond the bumper a little bit here. It adds to the uh, look of it. And also, the way it tucks in underneath the car and tucks into the belly pan, it really looks like air would pass under it properly and it could work as a proper diffuser. The factory lower insert leaves this air gap between the belly pan and the insert itself where air can get trapped in there and it would probably create more adverse effects than you would want at speed. Things I don't like. Well, one, I did have to make a permanent modification to the car in order for this to fit. I had to use those zip ties to pull the bottom of the bumper towards the car. I was hoping that that gap that was created on the passenger side by having to pull the right hand corner over with and hold it in place with the screw would go away, that the panel, the carbon fiber piece would stretch and that gap would close back up. It hasn't. That gap is still there. It's wide open. It's worse than it was uh, with the old insert. And I know that's being caused by the diffuser itself pulling the bumper toward the middle of the car. So in order to make that go away, I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of custom system in there to help push the bumper back out and I shouldn't have to do that. It shouldn't be distorting my bumper that much. The piece needs to conform to the bumper, not the bumper conform to the piece. Because I'm sure there's no two bumpers that are exactly the same. So the piece needs to be able to be adjustable and conform to your car. The other thing I don't like about it is that it is naked carbon fiber and Mavman says in his instructions that you want to avoid keeping the diffuser in direct sunlight because it will weaken and uh, 
disintegrate the piece over time if it's exposed to the sun. Well, the point of a car is to take it out and drive it and enjoy it, not keep it in your garage away from the sun. Now he suggests you get your uh, diffuser ceramic coated or if you painted it, that would protect it or do something to it. And the thing I say is, well, for a $600 piece, there should be an option to have the diffuser ceramic coated or to have some sort of coating or protection applied to it so it doesn't get baked in the sun and distort and disintegrate. If you're paying that much, you'll pay an extra $100 or whatever it would cost to have a coating put on to protect the thing. So that should be offered. I don't think the instructions were very good. The instructions could be done much better. They could be broken up into proper paragraphs. Pictures could be uh, included uh, so you can have some idea of what you're looking at because at first I was trying to take off the tabs for the bumper and I was missing those two inside uh, screws and nuts for the insert, but I eventually found them. I think it could be a good piece and I'm sure some people's carbon fiber diffusers fit perfectly and they don't have any problems. Maybe some people have horror stories. Personally, I don't think it fits very good along here where I can see where the tabs go in. Now my buddy Nick has a diffuser and he says mine fits better than his. So in some ways mine fits better, but in some ways it fits worse because it's pulling the bumper. So it's a horse apiece. You're definitely gonna have to mess with it to make it fit. This is not a direct bolt-in thing. You're gonna have to take your time, modify those tabs, maybe modify your car to make it fit properly or to your liking. So you gotta decide for yourself if you think it's a good investment. I personally think there's some areas that are left to be desired for $600. I'd love to try the fiberglass one that's a little less and see if that conforms more and uh, doesn't pull and distort the bumper as much. I don't think I'm gonna get that opportunity unless somebody wants to send me theirs because uh, I think those take just as long to get produced. So uh, that's my uh, review of it and I hope that you find it useful and helpful in making a decision whether to get one of these for your own car. So once again, thank you so much for watching Josh's Car Corner. Uh, more projects to come in the near future. See you next time. So as I'm sitting here editing this video together, I realized a while ago that I don't really go on Instagram. I don't really post anything on there. And why I'm still recommending that people follow the show there, I don't really know. So I'm not gonna do that anymore, but I will say that a while back, I did create a Facebook page for the channel called Josh's Car Corner. If you look for it on Facebook, you'll find it. I haven't really done anything with it yet. I have a lot of plans for it, and I'd like to actually kind of start a GTO community there where we can all share our ideas and share things we've done with our cars. Uh, maybe, I, maybe people can even start submitting their own videos of their cars. Uh, that is coming. Uh, like everything, I've been so busy I haven't had time to do it. Uh, and hopefully it'll become a regular thing where you'll be able to check for updates and I'll post little videos and post things that are going on. I just think it's a better medium for me to use because I use Facebook all the time anyway uh, to communicate with you what's going on with the show. So look for it on Facebook, Josh's Car Corner. Uh, from now on, if I'm going to ever post updates, that's where I'm going to post them. So look for that. Thanks again.